exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked will perish in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries will be shattered, the Most High will thunder in heaven, the Lord will judge the ends of the earth, he will give strength to the king and exalt the power of his anointed. The story of Hannah in the Bible is one that many people have gone to over the years because it just is such a story of, of hope and it's kind of like the, the uh, underdog story, right? So Hannah is barren, she's not able to have children. Um, and finally, as she, as she cries out to the Lord in, in her distress, the Lord sees her uh, and he and he rewards her and blesses her with a with a son, and she dedicates that son to the Lord. And this uh, this passage that we have here in Scripture is is just a, a song uh, where she recounts of, of how God he gives and takes away, he blesses uh, even when our backs are up against the wall uh, and we don't know where to turn. I think we all can relate to this story. Maybe we haven't been barren. Maybe we have. Um, I know in my own life, we waited 14 years um, before we had our first child, and it was a long, long wait for both me and for my wife. Um, but we all have these moments of waiting, uh, and this psalm encourages us to, to sing and to cry out, um, and to know that, yes, there, there are times where uh, we will be vindicated, there will be times um, where we won't be, uh, and that we will be the underdog, but as a is a, a call really to cry out to the Lord in the midst of wherever we are. And this Christmas, I think, can bring up so many emotions of broken dreams and broken promises and precious memories as well. So this Advent, as we, as we long for, for our Savior's return and we think about His birth, may we remember the good times and the hard times, uh, but most of all, may we look to His return knowing that one day his fullness will be seen and all of this will be finalized. But in the midst of that, let's cry out to the Lord. Shepherd of Israel, may Jesus, Emmanuel, the Son of Mary, be more than just a dream in our hearts. With the apostles, prophets and saints, save us, restore us, and lead us in the way of grace and peace, that we may bear your promise into the world. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.